Well, yes, what's the thing she has to stop? Doing it. Serving one another, but also serving the church. Wait, I thought Serving the world, too. Yeah. Something interesting um, to note, in, in the early church, right, if you ask, like, you know, where, where are women in the early church? One of the big um, kind of, I guess, I don't know, classes or ministry roles in the early church were the class of widows. All right, especially, especially widows for, like, you know, like, famous, like, Christians. So, for example, say, say your husband was, like, a bishop in the early church, and he, he, he dies. A lot of women chose not to get remarried. All right, a lot of women chose not to get remarried and to stay as a widow and they actually held authority in the church, right? Partly if you think about it, like you basically have like this, this couple serving together their entire life, and then one half passes away, and their wife continues to serve. But what that tells you that in the very beginning of the relationship was they had a huge um, impact on the church, they served the church, and even when the husband kind of like passed away, the wife still had, had authority in their ministry. I, and I, I'm hoping that's something you women aspire to, right? I'm hoping that's something you women aspire to so that you know, you're looking for a guy you can serve with, right? So that, so much so that your family is known for serving. So your family is known as a leader in the church to help people grow in godliness and holiness, right? So that even if you guys are ever separated, the people will still see you guys, still see you at least that way, right? As a person who's dedicated and committed to serving the church, okay? Um, a lot of early heresies and a lot of early like bad things were kind of like fought by all the widows in the church, and especially when we talk about like some of the persecution in the early church, right? Um, there were a lot of widows. There were a lot, a lot of widows, okay? Um, interesting fact, John, John Calvin actually married a widow um, of an Anabaptist who was like killed, like for martyrdom, something like that. Um, and was, John Calvin married a widow, right? Partly because, you know, widows had a really high status, especially if their husband was martyred and stuff. Kind of trivia stuff. All right, next, what else? Another one. Serving, what else? There's one thing I heard all, in all the groups. Okay, so let me just say it. Praying. Praying, okay. Why? Okay, so why is praying important? In, in a relationship? Yeah, it's not in your relationship. I don't know, maybe like just having the same, um, same direction. Like, not only are we talking about, but like, setting the same kind of. Heard what is something you do in a relationship that you do not do 
With no, other people, yeah. Wait, is that what you said? Yeah. yeah we have nothing. In your face, son. <laughs> <laughs> but we have nothing to say. It's like, hey, if, and you serve together with other people, if we, right? say, if we say Christ and I mean, that's really broad, right? Yeah. So I, I wanted to kind of limit it a little bit. Let's go. Well, would you be in some way preparing for Mary? Okay, no, no, and that's good. See? Um, <laughs> yeah, like, preparing your hearts for marriage, too. No, even if it's not with the other person, at least to say, like, God grows as a, you know, the people, as individuals. So we wait for marriage. Anything else? This is, this is a big one. It's one that you got missing. Anybody? Anyone in the group in the back? Leslie? Chasm down. I see you. I'm tall. <laughs> Guiding each other towards Christ? Guiding each other towards Christ. Let, let me slow this in. For dependency on God. This is especially important um, when you're married. All right, I'll tell you something that you know I, I try to do for, for me and Carmen and our family. Um, the reason why you pray, right, is you, you want your entire life, and especially if you're leading a family, to, depend, to be dependent on God. I, I think, so this is one of the things I hate about conservative Christian culture, right? Is that we say to guys, like, okay, guys, man up, right? It's time to lead. It's time to lead people. It's time to, like, no, like, fight tigers and stuff. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and, and, like, so play sports, like, watch MMA and all that stuff, right? Okay, oh, well, I agree with that, right? Um, <laughs> tigers are serious at this test. <laughs> Should we fight tigers? <laughs> well, I agree with that. You, you don't ever want to tell people, like, to make people feel, feel defeated and like they have no hope. And as if they have to work harder, right? As if they're inadequate and now they have to work harder and like be a man and stuff like that. Okay. I think, I think what the Bible tells us is like, are you what you should be? No. So what do you do? Ask God. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. Have the power of God in your life so that the word, the word of God Right, the testimony of Jesus Himself is in your life. That you believe in the sovereignty of the Father, and that you are walking in the power of the Holy Spirit, and that's why you pray. I honestly think I think the cr crucial thing, especially for kids, to see their parents, right, say, "How do we pay bills this month? Can we pay bills this month because we make hundred grand a year? Is that how we pay the bills? Right, because we have good jobs, right." How are, we, how are we gonna take care of our health this year? Is it just because like I'm a bodybuilder, I work out, whatever? Is that how we're, we're gonna have health? Right? What's gonna keep us safe? Is it because we live in La Jolla or whatever? Especially for kids, you want to from a young age, everything is dependent on God. Our salaries don't matter if God doesn't come through. Our health and our, our youth does not matter if God doesn't come through. Right? And that not, and seriously as a couple, you seriously need to pray that, right? Because it, especially as you leave families, right? You want to teach kids that. Because you know what kids are learning in America today? You can do it. Just do it. Just work harder. Right? Think good thoughts. <laughs> I, I, I remember, I remember uh, like, all, all these like, celebrities now, like, whenever like, someone gets sick, like, you, you see interviews, they're like, oh, I heard your friend is sick. He's like, oh, yeah, I'm thinking of positive thoughts for the other person. I'm like, what is that going to do? <laughs> what is that going to do for the other person? That you're thinking positive thoughts. <laughs> right? <laughs> it's, it's so important in our, in our relationships. Right? And you really want to foster this and say, like, you know, especially when I get married, have a family, have kids. And we foster a dependency on God, right? That nothing happens without God, right? So that, so that if you're the most talented, like, you know, pastor in the world, you know, you say in front of, if you're in front of your kids, in front of your aunts and uncles and whatever, and say, I can't do anything unless the power of God comes. If you're the most talented engineer in the world and, like, you work on this great project, right, you sit at home and say, oh, my words mean nothing. Unless God comes through in prayer, all right? And that's seriously crucial. And again, this is what I'm talking about. This, like, people think that relationships are just about that. Right? I mean, that's, that's why so I'm going to bring the Bachelor into this. Okay. So when I was watching The Bachelor, and like, kind of, kind of you ask people on, at UCSD campus too, like, why do you want to be in a relationship? They're like, I don't want to be alone. Right? I want to have fulfillment in my life. All right? That's a dangerous thing, man. Like, like two broken people come together, <laughs> make a really broken mess. <laughs> 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 
Um, so, so some people are psychotic, like, when they're like single and like psychotic, I need a man. <laughs> like, like, I don't know about this man, like, I don't know if I can fulfill your needs. <laughs> you have a lot more needs that I can fulfill. <laughs> All right, I think the object you're working towards in a relationship is just the same object you're working towards as a single person. You want to honor God to enjoy God forever. Right. You don't move towards a dating and a marriage relationship. You're like, okay, now I can be like satisfied with the other person. Right? Now I can be happy in the other person. That's, that's not a good place to be. Right? Even when you're like married, you say, our, ha our happiness still comes from God himself. We experience that through marriage, but it's ultimately God himself. Right? Um, who wants a bachelor in here? Any girls want a bachelor? Here's the best. Um, I, I say communications, right? And, it's, it's, and so it's, it's always interesting is like some messages like media projects. Um, but again, like alone, like afraid of being alone, right? Just trying to find fulfillment in, in like dating with shit, that's a, that's a dangerous place to be. Well, what I'm trying to show you guys, like we should be shooting for in your relationship is, is a continuation of what you're doing in your, in your single life, right? And that's, that's what it really should be. And, I, and honestly, that's how you kind of fight all this bad stuff over here. Right, you don't you don't fight like planning for the future and like together and like you know social commitment to each other by saying let's not do it. But honestly, it's it's re-examining what is this relationship about, right? Did I get into a relationship so that I can be fulfilled, right? So now I can like oh on Valentine's Day you know I can like have chocolate or like <laughs> go to the movies like that. And, like if that's what, what a relationship is about, right? It's, it's not worth it. It really isn't. Okay, because because like that's like. I mean, you can just like you know have caffeine and be happy that way. Like the same, same that happiness, <laughs> right? Pretty sure it's not. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Well, caffeine. I'm pretty addicted to that. So. Oh. All right. Um, but a relationship is more than that, right? If, if if the happiness if the happiness in the marriage relationship goes goes to a deeper spiritual heart level, um, then you can you can kind of fight all this, right? You really can. You can say, you know what? If our marriage is really about Right, like serving orphans. I, I know Carmen, Carmen served in an orphanage in China before. You know, I, I still work with orphans down in Shanghai. I really want our family to be about that. Right, something I really, really care about. You know, and so because of that, because of, because of my thinking, like, you know what, I want to be a testimony to orphans. How, how am I going to compromise um, physically in our dating relationship? What kind of testimony would I be to young girls, right, junior high school girls? If my own relationship, I can't keep holding this. That helped me all the time fight that. <coughs> right? It's like, as I said, like, you know what? I want to show these girls who grew up with no parents what it looks like to have holiness in our relationship. And that, that helped me fight so much in my dating relationship. Right? And to say, like, you know what? If I want to be a testimony to these people I'm serving, right, then I need to do this in my own life. You know? How do you fight, like, you know, alone time and all that stuff? It is to say, what is my life about? Right. If I'm just like you know, traveling to like you know Europe and like South America or like taking cruises, right? Is my life just about enjoyment, enjoyment, like hedonism? Find as much enjoyment as I can. The more money I make, the more life I enjoy. Right. If it's like that, then oh, obviously you'd be tempted to like take trips with your girlfriend and stuff like that. But if it's not, right? But if you say in my marriage relationship, I ultimately want to sacrifice for others, right? So that I have enough for myself, but I definitely have enough to share. Then the temptation to like do those kind of trips is not as great, right? Because because then in your free time you're always thinking like you know what, I want to make sure that you know, we don't have time to relax. But how can we also help others while we're doing this, right? How can we make our recreation beneficial for others too, and a, and a testimony to others, right? So so the way the way we vacation encourages others, right? And so so that's why this list right here is really really important. Right? And I encourage you guys to think about this too. The the more godly things you pursue in your dating relationship. The, the easier it is going to be to keep boundaries. All right? It really is. The easier it's going to be to keep boundaries. All right? Obviously, you should still have accountability. You know, obviously, you should still tell people about you know, what's going on in your dating relationship. Right? But I, I don't think the key is like, okay, let's, let's go through the list this week. You know, did we do this? Okay, that's bad. That's bad. Okay, that's week. Let's not try to do these things. Right? The key really is, okay, as we're dating, let's continue to think about why we're we even together. Does this relationship help others? You know, there are people encouraged by our daily relationship. Um, see those things. Hey, is everyone in a small group in this room? Kind of, everyone? Okay. 
Um, Y'all need to be in a small group. Okay. Uh, the women's small group, women's small group people, uh, Carmen and Virginia, and then Kevin and there we go. <laughs> Big red. <laughs> Big red. Hey, you need to you need to be in a small group. All right? I can only help you guys for a little bit in this class, but your small group is where you guys really keep each other accountable. All right, so I will leave you with that. Let's pray. Our Father God, we thank you that your word guides us and give us direction and give us life and clarity um, to where you would have us. And God, and we know that there's so many things out there telling us how to live our lives and how to interact in our board girl relationships. But God, you have a higher plan for us, God. You're setting us apart uh, for yourself, for your kingdom. So Lord, help us to be continually focused on you, to enjoy you ultimately, and not just our relationships. Um, and in all things, seek to honor and please you, be a pleasing aroma, um, in your presence. And God, we ask you to continue to help us this week uh, to live in holiness. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.